In this video, we will build a simple layout for our sign up form. It will be nice and responsive. And we will talk about Tailwind CSS. We will talk about the basics, about some configuration and how to do a simple layout like this. So if you are completely new to Tailwind, then this is a great introduction. If you are not interested in Tailwind, then you can skip all the way to the functionality, building the functionality. But if you are new to Tailwind and you want to learn some of the basics, then keep watching. First of all, what is Tailwind? Tailwind is a utility first framework or CSS framework that gives you these small building blocks that you can use to style your designs. Okay, there is definitely some learning curve or some adjusting the way you think about styling. And now I'm going to list a couple options or a couple of reasons why I really like it after working with it for a few months. The first one is that I don't have to think about the naming of the classes and I can just use the utility classes themselves to create the layouts. Okay, so there is no thinking about naming. There is no switching between HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Everything happens in one file, especially when working with React or Next.js. All your styling is happening in the same file as where you're writing the markup. That's a big benefit. Another big benefit is the responsive syntax. So you can, with just a simple prefix of the class, make sure that it's going to be applied only at a specific breakpoint. And I feel that is probably the biggest win when it comes to using Tailwind CSS, the media queries are super useful. And all the unused styles or un unused classes will be removed at the end when you're building the production build and uh, the CSS, the final CSS is very small. Okay, so there is many more benefits of using it. And in this demo, as I said, we'll apply it to our example and to help us Inside of VS Code, we will also install the IntelliSense for VS Code. So if this is the first time you're working with Tailwind, you probably want to install Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It will give you the nice drop down and auto completion when you're writing the classes. So feel free to pause the video and install Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Once you install it from the VS Code or Marketplace, Visual Studio Marketplace, you will then be able to get the auto completion. If it doesn't work for you straight away, make sure you restart it. And then you would be able to get the text colors, for example, all the options, everything would drop down for you. You would also get the hover help tools. This will show you what this class will actually end up being in the browser. On weight 700, if you type in font bolt and so on. And if you type in some classes multiple times, then it would give you this hinting or linting. It would give you the error saying that you've already defined the text color. Okay, so that's definitely a must. If you're working with Tailwind, make sure you have this extension. Now we can start building our layout, remove the color of the H1. And in the top container, we will define a few classes to center a main container. So the MX auto will give a margin left and right auto. And then we specify in the medium breakpoint and inside of the medium breakpoint, we want to give it some max width. Okay. So this should center it. And just to make it obvious, we need to tweak the content for now. Just put a here placeholder hero component. We will replace it with the actual component later on, but now we have a container centered and to make it even more obvious, give it some background color. So BG white will give it background white color and P4 will give it some padding. Okay, so that's what the classes are used for. Simple little classes that give it one CSS attribute at a time. And in the top level, we can specify another option for the medium breakpoint. We'll give it a padding left and right and the min h screen means that it will always be at least the 100% of the viewport height. If we combine it with flex and flex call and just define the content or just define center all the child elements, we have the hero component of the sign up form centered in the viewport. So in our case, that's not really what we want, but I just wanted to show you that with few classes, we can center elements easily on the page. 
and there was the demo that we are trying to replicate so let's remove the flex and flex call you see how adding few classes to your element will create the layout quite quickly now you might be asking whoa 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 how how many classes do i need to remember how do i know what they mean and that's part that's part of the learning curve when you starting with tailwind one of the biggest helpers is the tailwind website and at the top there is a quick search where you can search for let's say padding and get to the documentation see what the values actually relate to and you'll be definitely at the start going between your html and the docs so have it open on the site quickly search for what do you need same thing applies to margin anything related to any layout you will use the docs on tailwind css very often and that same thing applies to flex anything related to your layout your css the docs are great and they will explain you what the class is trans translating to let's break this up into small multiple videos just so it's easier to follow especially when you're starting with tailwind it might be too much to consume so many new classes so let's recap what we've done here we are setting a margin left and right auto on our container in the medium breakpoint we are giving it the max width 48 rem that comes from the predefined scale from tailwind css so there's pre-configured scale of the sizing and 40 48 rem applies to 3xl the md stands for the media medium breakpoint and the best way to know what that refers to is again go to the docs md and go to the responsive design you'll see the breakpoints broken down small medium large extra large and super extra large that's been added to tailwind css 2.0 so if you're working with all the ones you might not have this to excel and these are the values that it relates to it applies these media breakpoints so it's quite straightforward what it does and if you want to override it or add your own one then you would add it to the custom tailwind config okay so that's what they relate to you can chain them as well you can have a different size on a medium breakpoint and large breakpoint okay very handy as i said media query is one of the best features of tailwind then inside of the medium breakpoint as well we applying the padding left and right and also min height will apply to the container in all breakpoints we want to make sure that it stretches to the full viewport height and inside of the main we're simply changing the background color to white as you can see this could be any other background color bg and you see how i lost the auto completion this happens to me as well it's one of the little annoying things when it comes to working with tailwind once you delete the word or mistype it you have to delete it and make a space to get the auto completion again so bg could be easily blue 200 and if we save it we have a nice blue background so working with the colors is very good as well makes it very consistent you will not just throw in any hex values you will always work from what's defined in the tailwind, con tail tailwind config and that's what makes it nice and consistent okay so that wraps up this video short intro to tailwind and how the class is affecting the design and we'll continue in the next video